Call of Duty is a game of tenths of a second. Gunfights are won and lost, dreams are realized and shattered, killstreaks earned and ended, matches dominated and defeated in only tenths of a second. And with that in mind, nothing is more important than the strategically applied power of your technology and its speed and competence in communications. You have merely adopted the lag. I was born in it, molded by it. In a fit of fury, I once stomped my Xbox into oblivion, and as I pulled my foot, fresh with bloody wounds and mottled flesh from the crunched, jagged metal of what had been my Xbox, I felt stupid. More stupid than any human being ever ought to feel, and so I deliver this video to ye the people now, in hopes that it will save you from ever having to hate yourself as much as I did in that one excruciating moment. And perhaps more importantly, it'll probably save you some money on shattered controllers, broken fingers, and smashed walls. So for starters, the single most important step you have to take to ensure a proper internet connection is the ethernet cord. If you're connecting to your router wirelessly, you are shooting yourself in the foot. The ethernet will always, 100% of the time, provide a better connection than connecting to the router wirelessly. It's basically the difference between traveling at the speed of sound and traveling at the speed of light. If you're far away enough from your router, don't worry, they sell ethernet cords up to any length you want. You can get them just about anywhere, Radio Shack, Best Buy, whatever. There is no penalty for length because the speed of light can travel 100 feet fast enough so that the length makes no practical difference. I believe the best cord on the market right now is the Cat 6A. You want that cord running straight from your Xbox to the router. Any splitters or any of that bullshit will screw you over. Use tape to keep the cord stuck tightly to the ground or walls so nobody trips. Put it under rugs and paintings or what have you and you can basically make it invisible if you try hard enough if someone in your household is concerned about it being ugly or a hazard. Now if you are stuck on a wireless setup, there are still meaningful steps you can take to ensure a stronger connection. Try and get your console or PC as close as possible to the wireless modem. Every inch counts. Move it to the other side of your room if that side is closer to the wireless modem. Also try and get a direct line of sight between your modem and your console. Just like in Call of Duty, a direct line free of any physical obstructions between the two devices. And reduce Use EM interference as much as possible. That means basically anything that communicates remotely, but in particular smartphones. If you have a smartphone near your modem or near your console or anywhere in between, put that thing in airplane mode for the exact same reason airplanes have you put it in airplane mode. Your smartphone is constantly communicating with random shit and that generates a lot of EM interference and if it can disrupt a plane's communications, it can disrupt your console's communications. So put your smartphones in airplane mode. If you have a wireless laptop, put that thing to sleep. Anything that is communicating wirelessly will cause EM interference, even wireless controllers. So if you're on wireless internet, you should consider plugging your controller in. Now, there are also two simple steps you could take that will actually go a long ways towards solving gameplay inconsistency issues that you may be attributing to connection, but which are actually the result of your hardware underperforming. Uh, so step one is making sure you always have your game installed on your console. Now if you have digitally downloaded it, then you're good to go. But for those of you using discs, you need to make sure you manually go in there and tell your Xbox to install those discs onto your console. Uh, basically, the best way to combat lag is to reduce the number of processes that have to take place for the game to run. Your console having to scan the information off your disc is a process, alright? If something goes wrong, it's going to have to refer to the disc to figure out how to fix what's going wrong. That's going to cause lag, uh, and that's when you get those more serious issues, screen freezes, whatever. It's a process ripe for potential errors as well. Um, so installing it straight to your console will allow for a much smoother experience in general and should prevent it from most freezes and bugs because if something ever does go wrong with the code, your console will know how to fix it without having to refer to that disk. Secondly, the type of screen you are using can potentially cause lag. The older and bigger your TV is, the more delay there will be in the time it takes for the information in the Call of Duty world to be fully displayed on your screen. It's a very minor delay, but on certain televisions, that delay can reach up to even 50 milliseconds, which is more than enough time for someone to kill you. If you've ever been frustrated because you feel like people are killing you before you even see bullets leave their gun, for instance, you feel your controller rumbling before you see yourself getting shot on the screen, it's likely that that has a lot to do, or at least a little to do, with the screen you're using. You know, anytime you see a setup video for one of those big YouTubers, you'll notice that they are always, 100% of the time, on a computer monitor. There's a reason for that. Computer monitors don't suffer from the same delays, and sometimes it's very hard to notice the delay on your TV. In large part because most other players are on television as well, so the delays even out, nobody has the advantage. But if you switch to a monitor, you'll notice your controller becomes much 
much more responsive, like you barely tap the joystick and your guy starts moving, that's not because your controller has magically become better, that's because there's no delay from the controller to the screen, and in the long run this will give you much stronger aim and reaction times, and if you're suffering from other connectivity issues, this can help make up for that, this can compensate, uh, especially against other players who aren't on a monitor. So hook your console up to your computer monitor if you have an extra computer monitor lying around, you know. Um, it should just be able, you should be able to use that just standard HDMI cord. Now, bandwidth usage. If somebody is streaming YouTube or Netflix or Hulu or porn, you're screwed. However, there is a point with each video where it no longer requires further downloading from the internet. So, you know how in a YouTube video there's at the bottom, you have like a red bar, which is how far you are in the video, and then underneath that there's a light gray bar that fills up the empty dark gray bar? When that light gray bar fills all the way up, it's no longer stressing the internet. You could disconnect the device from the internet and it could still play that video as long as you don't leave the web page. So, if you have someone in your house who watches Netflix regularly, but usually at the same time as when you like to play uh, video games, you know, for instance, I think in the typical household, you know, everyone gets home around three to five from work or school, and mom's watching Netflix and you're trying to play video games, what you can do is ask her or whoever it is if they can open up the web pages for the episodes they plan on watching that day earlier in the day, like maybe in the morning before they leave for school. And then when you both get home, you can play your games and they won't actually be streaming. They won't have to, you know, shit on the bandwidth because the video will already be loaded on the web page. Um, another strategy to employ if people in your house are using up too much bandwidth and they aren't that tech savvy, and this is something I did a lot in my childhood, you disconnect the internet unplug the cord but like kind of leave it dangling in the socket of the router they'll be like oh what's wrong with the internet and there's a chance they give up and go find some non-internet activity to do like maybe they turn on the tv instead or something and then you plug the internet back in secretly and you can use that shit free of interruption also something to be on the lookout for obviously you know to exit out of all the internet pages you can to allow for the most uh you know internet use possible but a lot of the time there are also these sort of hidden programs that use the internet that don't necessarily have a page up to exit out of most commonly some Something like uTorrent or other software sharing programs. If you've pirated a song or a movie in the last couple of years, you probably have uTorrent. A lot of the time, uTorrent won't have a page for you to exit out of. It will just be active as a little icon in the bottom right corner of your computer near the clock and all that. But uTorrent uses a lot of bandwidth. It is constantly sending and receiving shit. So make sure to keep an eye out for any of these types of programs, Dropbox, Skype sometimes. Check that corner, bottom right corner for any icons. Control Alt Delete, check uh, Task Manager for any applications or processes to make sure there isn't anything running that sounds like it might be an internet type program. Now, another thing to keep in mind is server population based on the current time. You're much more likely to run into lag issues at 1 a.m. on a weeknight because nobody in your region is online. Try to choose times to play that will be around the same times you would expect most of the people in your region to be playing. Like a Friday night, right? Or on a weekday, wait until everyone has gotten home from work or school. Lastly, your NAT type. If your NAT type is closed or moderate, you need to fix that shit because it's going to cause you a lot of problems. 90% of the time this problem is very easily fixed by simply unplugging your router. While it is unplugged, before you plug it back in, hard restart your console on both the PS4 and the Xbox One. All you have to do is hold down the power button for 10 seconds. Then after it's shut down, plug the router back in. Wait a little bit for the router to get fully fired up and operational. Sometimes it takes some time for it to reestablish its connections. Then turn on the console, bada bing, bada boom, problem solved. Hard restarting your console from time to time is also good in general just for smoother performance. Now, all that being said, there's still a chance that Call of Duty will continue to lag simply because there's nothing you can do to stop it, and I will explore that possibility further in a video popping up on your screen at the end of this video. Please remember to rate the video if you found it helpful. This is Batman, signing out.